Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Monday Morning Mojo with Anna Gibbs. I'm excited about this um, episode because we're going to be talking about ways that you can really manage your energy, take back your power, especially, I think, during this season when we have a lot more on our plate and we have a lot of things that might be pulling at us from different directions from work to family, to the holidays, to everything in between. And today I'm joined by Stephanie O'Connell. And uh, Stephanie is a really a change catalyst. She is a transfer, transformative coach with a very rich background in corporate leadership spanning over the last 30 years. She's also a master energy healer and an international best-selling author. So I'm excited to invite her to uh, join us on the show today because she's very passionate about helping individuals, groups, and organizations just navigate around transition. And um, I've had the pleasure of speaking with her before. She has a unique approach And I'm excited to jump into the conversation today around transformation and energy and and really just um, staying focused on how to to put ourselves first and take back that power. So welcome to the show, Stephanie. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. It's a delight to be here. Yeah, I'm glad to have you. And, you know, for for those of the listeners, those of the people, see, (laughs) edit. For some of our listeners who may not be familiar with what we mean by a catalyst for change and a transformative coach, talk to us a little bit about the work that you do and who your ideal client might be. Happy to. So we all have our lives and we have certain patterns and cycles that we go through. And for some of us, that's comforting. We We might go to the same place on vacation. We might have the same food for our birthdays or or for special occasions. However, there's times when we outgrow those things Mm -hmm. where those no longer satisfy us. Those no longer bring us joy. Oh my gosh, making that special pie that we always need to make now for Christmas with all the ingredients. Suddenly it can become heavy energetically, meaning it no longer brings us joy and delight to make that special pie. And I'm just using that as an example. Um, Now it becomes burdensome, a struggle, tiring, the last thing you wanna do. And what I've noticed is when our energy starts to become heavy, that's a catalyst for change. Something has shifted and it could be you've outgrown it and or it's just the way the season is going. You have said yes to other things and now doing all of that is not going to fit in. But I always find that when our energy starts to feel dense, heavier, lethargic, that's your sign that something needs to shift. Something is energetically. And that's what I mean by a catalyst. Something shows up to say, hmm, something's different or needs to be different because I really do believe we're meant to live life lighter, more energized, um, happier if we can. And not be struggling and and feeling dense and heavy. Now, sometimes it's a season where we're reminded of sad things. So I'm not really speaking to those situations, but I'm just in general, when life becomes heavy, it's time to adjust something. I love that you said, you know, when things change, not necessarily that something's wrong, right? Because because change can be... um, the most this the most significant part of growth and without that we really can't move forward so you know in in the example you used uh i'm because sh- what i thought about were some times in my life when i've noticed that things i held on to or things that had meaning i should say that i held on to with meaning in my life may change it may look different and it's not that that's bad or wrong it just means that either i'm evolving things around my life have evolved and there's a different value put on it so do you find that a lot of the clients you work with as a coach are struggling with it because they think that maybe something's wrong I do believe that. I also think the struggle comes from we do have to let go or detach from some things to make room for the new. And where the struggle happens is 
I, I see potential. I want a new life. I want better health. I want this, but I'm not letting go of anything. Well, guess what? The new can't come in because you're full. You're already full. And so by nature, we need to release, but somehow there's a judgment associated with it. What do yeah. you mean you no longer want to keep the teapot collection that's been passed down for generation to generation, or you no longer want to go to that place on vacation? You know, we do need to detach to make room for the new to come in. And yeah, that. we do because touch you, ourselves. Well, because we you can't you can't bring in new experiences, right? If if you know, yes, there are, there's room for traditions, but I think there's an opportunity for us to explore new things too. And, you know, the, the, the world we live in is, is, is just busy to say the least, right? There's a lot of things coming at us. You know, uh, the life that we live today looks different than even the life our moms led or our grandmothers led for sure. And um, I think that, you know, how we connect with situations, experiences, and each other says a lot too. And if we attach different meanings to things, we might find that we start sucking the energy right out of our own life. Yes, absolutely. It can be like a vacuum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here it all goes. And I, and I'm, I think sometimes detaching can feel like a big move, but we can still be connected but also be detached. So detached does not mean I've dropped it entirely. I can catch the spirit of that transition or the spirit of that, um, yeah, tradition or way that we always celebrated and just update it or upgrade it or do it a little bit differently. And that could be because kids are different ages. So they're looking for different things. They're maybe bringing significant others into the mix now. That's adding a new dimension. And it's all okay as long as we are ready to be a bit fluid in redefining what really matters. Yes. Is it really the thing or is it the feeling the thing gave you. And I would say nine times out of 10, it's the feeling, not the actual thing. And that's okay. Let's find another way to bring that feeling in that feels lighter. You know, and it's, it's an interesting, it's such a great conversation for us to have right now. It's timely, right? With the holiday season. And, you know, most of our listeners are either entrepreneurs or working in, in big businesses. And as I said, you know, when I created this, um, as I said, when we were introducing you, um, there's a lot that we sometimes have to manage and sometimes have to juggle. And I think one thing that I would love for us to talk about and kind of unpack is, this is true anytime, but especially now during the holidays, how do we maintain our energy and protect our peace? Because the interesting thing is it when you talk about it, if we're all honest, we all want the same thing. We want to have a great experience. We want to connect with our family and friends. We want to enjoy that. We want to have some great food, whatever, right? All the things that we know are part of that picture in our head, that vision we play, that movie about what the holidays look like. And yet for a lot of us, it starts to become chaotic, a lot of pressure, on our, we put pressure on ourselves. We, we assume pressure from other things. And, and sometimes I think we can really experience disappointment when the outcome doesn't match the movie we had in our head. So uh, can we unpack that a little bit and maybe help some people manage that over these next couple of weeks? Absolutely. Absolutely. So energy is all around us. Everything vibrates. Um, even the mouse on my computer has a vibration. And so we have available to us the ability, every single one of us, to refresh our own energy that's in our body. And we can do it in different ways. But how I would think about it is, imagine that your physical body is a cup, a cup. And you, as I do, maybe, run that cup kind of dry. Mm. <laughs> You're not filling it back in. 
You're not filling it in with the things that recharge you. And so I found many holidays where I get depleted and I'm giving, 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 giving and doing, 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 and I'm not pausing to refill my cup. So the number one thing I recommend is some form of recharging your own energy. And it varies. Some people need movement. They need to go for a walk. They need to do some yoga. They want to move their body somehow. And that engages the energy out in nature is another natural place where we can bring the energy of nature into us. Some people it's a meditation or a mindfulness practice. Sure. Some people it's fantastic music and dancing in their bathroom, but know what your things are, what are your go-to things, and constantly check on how full your cup is. And, you know, it's metaphoric, but it's actually literal too. Like if you feel like you're half empty, meaning you're on a half a tank of gas, you got to fill up. Don't right. wait. I remember learning how to drive in the snow with my dad on the East Coast. And he's like, never, ever, ever, Stephanie, have less than a half a tank of gas in the snow. Why? Yeah, right. Or I think most of our dads taught us that. Because, yes. Sometimes and, we don't yes. listen. And you know, the thing that you what I think is important to mention too, Stephanie, is that we are filling ourselves up with healthy choices. Yeah. Because let's be honest, for some people, it can also be really hard and stressful the holidays. We might eat too much, we might drink a little too much, right? We might find other things that we think are are filling us up or uh, right. you know, allevi alleviating some of the stress, but it's really doing just the opposite. It is, it's detracting. And when I think about the times when I absolutely used a glass of wine to take the pressure off um, for many, many years, in a way I'm, I'm avoiding my cup and escaping. Mm -hmm. It's almost like this life is too much. So I'm just going to go over here and relax a little bit with this yeah. class. It really isn't doing anything to fill me. It's actually an escape of my life. And I will tell you there, I had built a life of work and family that I wanted to escape. Mm. And now I'm like, well, that's silly. Why don't I build a life I love? Yes. I want to build and create a life. You just I captured the essence of this it. podcast. Yes, you just captured the essence of this podcast. You know, my my mission is to really encourage people to build a life they love, right. professionally, personally, spiritually, in our relationships. You know, we only come through this way once, right? So we we really need to think about the greatest project we could ever work on is us or ourselves. Yeah. So I find so back to catalyst for change. One yeah. is if I have heavy energy in any part of my life, relationship, um, home life, work life, et cetera, that's a catalyst for change. The other is, am I starting to escape? And escape can be binge watching for long periods of time. Do we all want to do it a little bit? Yes. But it could be overdoing something that is having you escape the very life you're living whether it's over shopping or overeating or over drinking or tuning out, you could even for a while, I over napped. I'll just keep falling asleep and be like, okay, the life yeah. will be here. I'll over just, scrolling on social I media, will right? For a while. And then, and that's the thing is we're actually really, we're the only thing we're doing is escaping. And then some of those habits actually are hurting your body or your yeah, brain. I think, I think it's numbing us. It's just it numbing is. us rather than, Allowing us to, you know, if we're talking about, you know, finding ways to harness energy um, or to, uh, you know, take back some of our power, then, you know, we can't numb ourselves into that. We have to be willing to find ways to raise our our, our vibration. Exactly right? right. And it's almost like you have a splinter in your finger and you decide that you want to numb it. And then you never take the splinter out. You just numb it. Mm, it's a good analogy. I like <laughs> and then that. I'm living my life with a splinter in my finger. So, so those are two things. So you're right. We want to fill our cup with the very things that are life giving, rejuvenating. And for a lot of people that is movement, music, is it a great energy lift? Because music is a vibration. Right. So listen to upbeat music. Listen to music that's going to raise your vibration. Think about things that you're grateful for. Gratitude, interestingly, actually 
increases your energy vibration to a higher level. And I know it's, it's, we talk a lot about gratitude, but it actually is an energetic solution to a lower level energy. The other thing I will say about energy is the energy we have all around us, you can't delete energy. Right. The energy we have around us is the energy we have, but we can alchemize it. So what do I mean by that? I can take sadness and add love energy and elevate it, but I can never delete sadness. I can never delete grief. I can't delete these heavy emotions, shame, mm -hmm. guilt, but I can through love, compassion, gratitude, all those great action verbs, loving myself, being grateful for what I have, that actually alchemizes a lower guilt, shame, anger, emotion up to something that now becomes courage. It becomes acceptance. It becomes, I start dreaming again. I start right. living life that you, this very podcast is about. Right. So if you find yourself in denser emotions, which actually vibrate slower, there's actually every emotion has a megahertz vibration. Okay. So Shame is like a 20. Love is a 500. So you got to get out of those right there, low double digits. Right. You got to get out of guilt and shame because they're so low. And get them higher. Get them higher to a higher vibration. Now, it's hard to go from guilt to love or mm -hmm. fear to love. But yeah. So go somewhere in the middle. Right. Neutral. Just get neutral. Right. Even that will help you. And so that is the other piece that I wanted to talk about is like, we can get into interactions with family members that are very triggering. Ah, uh, yeah. So I remember um, when I was going through a divorce and I thought, oh my gosh, Aunt Betty's going to ask me about that. And that's the last thing I want to talk about. I don't want to go into the details of the divorce at this holiday, but like I was prepared that she was going to ask me about it. And so I planned ahead what were going to be my change the subject phrases. Right. Good. I like so that. So I didn't I get that. triggered. Yeah. And some of that is a little pre-planning. Like, you know, you get triggered by certain people, places, or things. Yeah. It's managing that. the expectations, right? I, I, I've said this many times in coaching sessions with my clients, even trying to teach it to my kids that, you know, we get frustrated and disappointed when the expectation doesn't match the outcome. So we have to manage the expectation first, you yes. know, and, and that that's, that's key. Exactly right. And, and you, if you know something is a known trigger for you, be prepared on how mm -hmm. you're going to handle it. You can have exit strategies, you know, I'm going back to the buffet for the devil eggs. Can I get, I'm going to go get some more. It's been right. great to talk to you. See ya. Yeah. You know, and there's ways where, because I knew there were times when I wouldn't go at all. And I don't believe we're meant to live in isolation either. I think we are meant to put ourselves back out there, be in connection with people, but we can do it differently and we can avoid getting triggered um, by certain memories or tales or stories or things going on in your life that you just are not ready to talk about yet. Sure. Right. You're just not ready. And that's okay too. Yeah. You're still tender. It's, get, it's getting comfortable setting bound personal boundaries, which is really not easy for a lot of us. And and you know, it's it's something that we all have to work on. Um, what I think it's so challenging for, for people to be comfortable with setting their own boundaries? I think for me, and I do I do struggle as I'm a work in process on this yeah, one. Me too. Sure, for sure. I think when I started thinking of this analogy of a cup and you can make this the most beautiful cup in the world, it can be ornate. And I realized that I at all costs need to protect this cup. I don't want it shattered. I don't want it tarnished. I don't want it to melt. I don't, you know, and when I realized, and that's the metaphor for me, the person, then I became clear about, so what do I need to make sure that I don't hurt this cup right away. And in the past, I have allowed cracks. I have allowed, I have been hurt. 
I have loved and lost, you know, all those human things. So what am I going to do to take care of me so that I can stay vibrant? I can stay high energy in these environments that potentially have dragged me down in the past. Sure. Now, some people don't like it when you set up new boundaries. Oh, right. Oh, they, they're not, not always welcome. You. Right. Yep. Especially and if it's not it. in your pattern all along. If exactly. You, simply, you know, uh, you know, at some point in your life, you're like, Ooh, I'm going to make a left turn here. People are like, whoa, wait, but why are you changing on me? <laughs> yes. You're changing the dance music and the right. dance. And, and so some of that could be that we're just surprising people. It's not necessarily a judgment that it's wrong. It's just, whoa, I just didn't know. Like, whoa, okay. You know, I had no idea. So we just kind of changed the music and the dance and people got caught by surprise. So again, there's a way to proactively take care of that. So for example, when I decided I'm going to stop escaping with that glass of wine or two or more at a holiday, I actually would tell the friend that I was going to say, look, I'm just not drinking right now. I'm going to bring uh, like a mocktail. If Is that okay? I don't expect you to provide. It's my choice, but I want to be festive. And, and that way they don't feel like the host, like they're like, what do you mean? You're not having a glass of wine. What do you mean? You, we always have wine together. Right. So that way we're not like improvising at the event because it would be like telling someone you're now a vegetarian, right? You just want to make sure there's something you can eat on the buffet. And if yeah. you can't, then I'll bring my own. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's just being purposeful and thinking yeah. ahead. And and that's a, that's a great way to stand in our power too, right? To say, listen, exactly. this is what's working for me right now. And I need to continue that, protect it, maintain it. And, and it's so feeling really good. Surprise, here's what we're doing. Yeah. Exactly. And, and it's funny because I think when our feelings get involved, yeah. um, it, I think that's what kind of muddies it a little bit. But like, if I think about changing eating habits, I, I think many people are very supportive. Look, I'm, I'm allergic to gluten now, I'm not going to be eating the rolls. I know they're that you're that I know your famous recipe. I, I just, I can't eat your rolls anymore. Right. You I know? laugh because I am gluten free, and, <laughs> I, and I'm Italian. Both my parents were born in Italy. So a few years ago, when I tried to help my parents understand this, my father, my father said to me, "Well, it's just pasta." No, <laughs> right? So I get, yeah, yeah, um, and and some I, of it they may not understand, and that's okay. But it's not an effect front to them I guess that's the key is just say look I'm just making a different choice I feel better not eating that way anymore etc cetera, etc cetera. so right. I do think there's a proactive piece but I will say so what happens let's say you you do all those things you fill your cup you feel good you think you have a boundary it gets crossed and now you're triggered right because mm -hmm. that's going to be a question right you're there you're triggered okay so when we get triggered, what's actually happening is emotion typically from a past event is getting added to the current event. Yeah. So the current event, like, you know, when they say like it was the straw that broke the camel's back, it's not just the straw, it's a bucket of straw mm -hmm. from the past. And so what we need to do is buy ourselves time to cool down the emotional reaction and not blurt out or act out in that moment. So three to five cleansing breaths, if you can do it. Because you're just buying time to kind of get more even so yeah. you don't overblow the trigger. Right. And then you can decide, is it worth saying something or not? Is and, it and at the end of the day, we're all carrying around some kind of trauma, right? I mean, that, and that's, listen, guys, we're all carrying around something from our past, right. whether it's something that was said to us, whether it, and it could seem, you know, somewhat benign, but it really resonated somehow. We carried it with us, could yep. have been a big 
events. It could have been even abuse, right? So we're all carrying around something. And um, I think this is such an important conversation because during the holiday season, we're with more people. Yep. Sometimes we're with people we love dearly, but you know we don't see them all the time. So that that's another element. Um, and so we have to be aware that memories show up, traditions, all those things come into play. Um, and like you said, Aunt Betty, who's, you know, not afraid to ask the questions that others won't ask. Right. Uh, it, it, it is, it's triggering. Sometimes we, we connect with something um, from our past and, and it shows up in such a way that other people are taken aback and wondering why are you overreacting to that? But what is really overreacting? That's another question I, I wanted to ask you. Is that fair to even say or think about someone's reaction? Um, because we don't really know what is packed into all of that for them. We don't know what's triggering them. Well, yes. So if you notice, because th this happens too, where you you say something and it's clearly hit a nerve mm -hmm. and it was not your intention. It right. was not your intention to hit a nerve. In that moment, and I'll just go, let me just pause here for a second. Are you okay? Are you okay? Do you need something? You know, don't even try to imagine what's going on in their mind just notice that you probably shouldn't keep talking because yeah. the person is clearly rattled or maybe their eyes are welling up with some tears who knows and that's when it's just like wait wait are you okay just ask two questions are you okay and what do you need right now and they're like a glass of water in my space. Okay, let me show you a room. Like, let me show you one of those sneaky bedrooms in the back that I happen to know about and give you some peace. But that's really how the best recovery is to just take care of the person in the moment. Yeah. And and to be aware to, to what's happening, because I've noticed, you know, um, I've been in situations where you could tell that the person is aware that something's going on with the other, but they're, they don't know how to handle it or respond. So they just keep talking and, right. and then all these emotions are are starting to bubble up from both parties. And I, you know, I think that what you're saying is so profound, just be aware, tune in. And if you feel that the other person's having a reaction or response, just stop. Yeah. You know, and um, and I love that. It's a simple question. Are you OK? What do you need right now? Yeah, because I know that um, maybe we need to ask ourselves those questions. Sometime right. Right. Day, right? Exactly. Am I okay? need... What do I need right now? Exactly. Because I remember back many years when I had a miscarriage, you know, that's kind of a silent loss. Some people don't even know how what that's about, how long you maybe were trying. And we were at a stage where we had been married 10 years. And so the typical questions were, when are you having kids? When are you having kids? And I'm thinking, we're freaking trying, you know, right. have no idea what our struggles are. You know, that's why yes. I want to yell at all of them, but it's so private. And someone was asking the gist of that kind of question. And I just started to well up in tears because just the emotion of it. And this person was wonderful and they noticed and were just like, oh, okay, what, what kind of, what do you need right now? And it was perfect because they just knew that something had changed in me um, with whatever was asked or said. Yeah. You know, and, and it's interesting because people, meanwhile, like I know <laughs> I have seniors in high school that are applying to colleges and people find that a very exciting topic. Well, they don't know what they want to do. And so they're like, mom, they're all going to ask me about colleges and what I'm going to major in. And I don't have an answer. And <laughs> so it could be what you think is the most benign talk about colleges. They're a senior when they're like, I'm confused. I don't know. And if I don't have an answer, what are they going to think? And so I think just being very tuned in to everyone, having a great intention that you you just want to be a loving, uh, you want it to be a good, friendly, loving connection and anything else, you just pause and go, are you okay? Yeah. What's your best advice for the unintentional 
um, boundary crosser, the person who thinks that they're, you know, they have the, the best of intentions and really do, yet they probably need some help with just framing questions or the art of conversation even, mm -hmm. you know, because I, I can also think of some people that I know who are really just lovely people and really, really, really mean well, but they just, they, they open up a conversation and it's like the lead balloon hits, hits you on the foot. Right. And so what, what can we do to share some thoughts on that? That might help some people listening today. Yeah. So and I can imagine some of those people actually um, <laughs> right now. I think I tend to ask more open-ended questions that get at so more like how rather than what, the, right? Exactly right. And just saying, you know, how are you managing the holiday season? Hear what comes out, you know. Right. Um, try not to do yes or no questions. You know, those are definitely feel trappy. Like, you know, it's really hard, isn't it? Yeah. Or it's really easy, isn't it? And I'm thinking, no, I'm thinking it's really hard. So right. something more open-ended. I would say also, especially if it's someone you haven't seen in a while and you really need to catch up, you could say, look, I, I feel out of touch. I own it. So what's been going on for you in the last two years? I mean, don't go back 10, but for the right. last year, you know, yeah. share with me some of the, the things that are going on and then just leave it wide open and you'll get a sense of what they're willing to share or not willing to share. Or, right? or maybe if you focus on something positive, right? Like what was the most yeah. exciting thing that happened to you this year? Yeah. You know? And, or uh, or what got your what got you excited or passionate? Or hey, do you have any new things that you're super passionate about? Anything? Yeah. You know, and yeah, you're getting at a higher energy idea of what are they really into. Um, you know, and I, I it, it can be tough because I know some, I'm not much of a reader. I'm dyslexic, so reading is hard for me. So I have people that say, well, what's, what's your favorite book right now? And I'm thinking, books are hard for me. I don't like to read books, you know? And so even someone well-intentioned- Could be what do you do for fun? Yes. Keep yeah. it with what do you do when you're not working? What do you like to do when mm -hmm. you're not working? Mm -hmm. Could be anything. Right. Um, and that way they can say, well, actually, I've been um I have bees and I'm making honey. <laughs> oh, <great. laughs> Tell me about that. I know nothing about that. Yeah. Oh, how what's that about? Yeah. So I would just say leave it as open-ended, you know what? What's interesting you right now? What's um, peaking? You know, what what is in, what are you involved in right now that outside of work that is taking up your time? Yeah. Um, and be open to an answer that you don't expect. But I actually think that brings the spontaneity back into life. I actually I like agree. It. And, you know, I think I think that there some of us really do need a little coaching on the um, art of conversation or the, the ability to ask some thought provoking questions, you know, that doesn't have to sound like you're coaching them or sound like you're grilling right. them, but just something that creates, you know, dialogue because, you know, okay, this might be the second full season since um, COVID that we're back out doing things. Mm -hmm. But it's weird because, you know, people are still reacting to that time in isolation and and people are also, I think, uh, more reliant on technology today. And um, it, it, it's, it, it, I see it when I'm out networking, when I'm out places. Um, there are some people who really struggle with the engagement of a conversation. Um, and so they avoid that mm -hmm. and may even find that they approach the event or the holidays, you know, as we're we've been talking about with trepidation because it's about not knowing how to connect with people or engage with people. Do you find that you work with some of your clients on that? Yeah, especially when they want to perhaps recast a relationship. Mm -hmm. um, we do talk very proactively about, first of all, how do you want to show up, you know, as this version of you right now? And we do talk about what, how do you want to feel at this event? And uh -huh. therefore, what might be your thinking, your approach, 
Can we anticipate anything that might be a trigger moment? Let's think of some ideas beforehand and then always have the exit, a gracious exit plan. So if you are like just in a completely awkward situation, you're, the conversation is going nowhere, you're tongue tied, they're tongue tied, how, how might you um, both get a little space and a little grace and just say, right. I really, I'm really parched. I think I got to go get a little more. Yeah. Right. Can I get one for you? And just, you know what my, my go-to has been for years. Now I'm going to reveal my secret is I usually find someone over your shoulder that I can say, Oh, Stephanie, do you know, Bill, Bill, introduce her and meet Stephanie. And I let them talk and I'm like, Oh, excuse me. I'll be back. Right. It's a great <laughs> one. Exit stage left. Absolutely. And just have some gracious exits. Um, it doesn't mean you're leaving the whole event, but no. you might feel like it's time to leave that conversation. Well, and it's also mm-hmm. sometimes helpful, you know, if you do want to connect with several people in the room, it's, listen, it's just managing, you know, the amount of time you have to, to, to see everyone Absolutely. too. Absolutely. And you can also have a buddy system. So if you are yeah. going with a colleague, so for example, my 85 year old mom has dementia And so she will tell similar stories over and over again. It's very common. And we were at an event on Sunday called Pie Fest. It was great. There was all these pies and, um, and I, she was over talking with somebody and I kind of noticed it had been a while. And I'm like, I think that lovely person stuck. So I kind of went over and said, Hey, you know, mom, I think we need to go over and thank this gentleman for the conversation. But I also be aware when you think maybe if you have like a buddy or, or someone you've gone with that they could also potentially be getting stuck in an uncomfortable situation and yeah. have a gracious exit. How can you help each other? I, I have done that ahead of time with some of my colleagues, mostly in the past, you know, with business mm-hmm. partners and or a boss who I knew would would my might need my help with that right so yeah, exactly um, and so if they're not great about the boundaries or haven't thought about their own exits you know i i always like to try to help out um and you can see the relief on the person's face so you know it was like a yes. perfect entry and redirect but i would say just refresh your skills i agree with you you know when much of our communication are text messages Yes. Having a whole conversation with someone, full sentences, we're out of practice. Yeah, we're and, out and of I practice. love people, love to talk. And I I mean, many people who know me well have given me compliments about just being a conversationalist. Yet sometimes coming off of a full day, like, you know, what we're talking about now is, you know, like, let's say going out and networking or being at a business function, especially during the holidays, more of those show up too. Mm -hmm. And so I'm catching myself realizing I'm not patient. I'm like, okay, (laughs) you know, let's, let's, let's just get through this quickly. And I have to remind myself, change my energy and say, no, enjoy this. Enjoy the connection with this person. Enjoy the event, be present. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I think that's another thing that steals our joy or steals our peace um, anytime, but especially during this season, um, is when we're not finding ways to be grounded and be present. Would you agree? I do agree. And I think that's, that's your key to picking up on what's going. If I'm distracted, replaying something from the past or anticipating the traffic when I leave and start calc, I'm not with you right now in the conversation. And I'm actually limiting my ability to to really notice if and when it's time to close a topic or maybe shift a topic or be with yeah. someone. And that does take practice too. And and like you said, bring yourself back to it when you notice yourself pondering. You know, no yeah. judgment. Don't yell at yourself in your head. Just go right. Oh, wait. Let me get back to the. I'm just going to observe and recognize what's happening right now. You know, so, and I personally can say I've worked on this. Um, you know, in, let's say, hosting the holiday dinner, right? I mean, I've been the one to host most of our big family functions. And I um, am very fortunate that I have my parents with us still. And, and I have grandchildren. So my parents are great grandparents. So we've got a lot of people in my house. 
and a lot of ages in the house. And um, if I am not aware and if I'm not managing my energy, I can get very caught up in all of that, you know, frenetic energy and not be present and not enjoy it. And so I've had to really be, a, you know, work on my awareness. And I'm sure I'm not alone um, in not getting consumed by, you know, trying to make it perfect and trying to, you know, do all the things a hostess or host has to do, but also enjoy my, my people, enjoy my time with my family. And, you know, as fundamental as that sounds, I feel like that's another message or reminder, you know, to share with everyone here right now, who's listening that, you want to, you want to connect and you want to be present and you want to enjoy what's happening around you. Exactly. And I think that goes back to what you were saying about expectation and outcome. If yeah. my outcome is to feel like I was present and enjoyed the people that I was with and held on to my boundaries, that can happen in so many ways. So really think about the outcome yeah. of what you're doing, where you're going. And I, I personally start with how do I want to feel? And then I back into the mindset, the thoughts, everything else, because at the end of the day, it's about energy and feelings are energy. Yeah. Imagine if we could all, you know, and I can listen, I get it. Some people listening to this might be like, ugh. I don't know how I could get to 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 actually stop and ask myself that question, but it's so powerful. If we could, you know, before we begin something or go into a vacation, go into an event, go into the holiday dinner, whatever the 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 presentation in the boardroom, whatever it is, if you could take a few moments and not just create the vision of of what you want it to look like, but how do I want to feel? Mm -hmm. Right. Because I doubt we're going to say, I want to feel, you know, panicked, overwhelmed, stressed out or anxious. Right. right. So we have to connect with how we want to feel ahead of time so that we can then like ease into that expectation. Yeah. And then back to that powerful question of what do I need? So mm -hmm. what do I need to feel those feelings at that event? And it could be a variety. Of, I better, you know, do really good self-care, whatever that is. I want to make sure that my clothes fit and I'm comfortable, whatever, right. so that you increase your chances. But you're yeah. absolutely right. And I think what's interesting is everybody does this, I believe, around a vacation. I want to feel this and I want all the good feelings, right? Yeah. This is about just doing that in your everyday life. I agree. Yeah. So it's a, it's something we do, but we do it for like every once in a while, special moments. But you're right. Nobody would go to the Bahamas and say, I want to feel stressed out every day and ornery and agitated. Right. Bring it, Bahamas. Nobody right. says that. <laughs> right. And yet the flip side is how many of us stop and say, okay, how do I want to feel this Christmas Eve with the family? Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, or the exactly. culmination, because I think the other thing is it feels like a marathon. And now it, we're so creative with extended families because, you know, I'm remarried. My ex is remarried. You know, sure. these, the holidays could go on because it's this Christmas with this and now Christmas yeah. with that family yeah. three days later. It can feel like a marathon. Definitely. And so regrouping at each stage and refilling that beautiful cup of yours what what are the feelings now? What boundaries? And this I would say aim high. Don't don't let the feeling be, I just want to survive it. That's a low yes, bar. Yes, I love a low bar. bar. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's not the goal is not to just survive and get through it um and grit your teeth and and have white knuckles the whole time it is to feel great and to thrive right I love right. that you just and that. just feel centered if that I just sometimes feel like if I can feel centered and what I mean by that is just grounded in me who I am what who I am in this world and own that if I can do that everywhere I go that to me is a victory that that's the goodness so I don't go back into the 12 year old version of me mm -hmm. or the 30 version of me. I'm me right now, right. centered, owning who I am. This is it. And that feeling in and of itself is, is amazing. You know, the, the triggers that affect our inner child, that could be a whole other episode, but that, that was mm -hmm. definitely worth saying too. And I trust 
someone heard that that needed to hear that. And um, Stephanie, um, any other, you know, last minute thoughts as we are, you know, winding down on our time together for the listener on just, again, you know, keeping the peace, literally your peace, not just the peace, but keeping your inner peace throughout this time of the year that you would like to share? Yep. So I would imagine it, that peace right in your heart. Mm -hmm. It's right there, protected, guarded. You can actually think of yourself if you want energetically that you're in your peace bubble. You can imagine yourself in a peace bubble and only good feelings and vibes come in the bubble. No lower level energy. Because some of us are energetically sensitive and we pick up on the feelings of others whether it's our kids our friends and so by being in your own peace bubble it allows you to have a bit of a membrane between yourself and others when you tend to sometimes pick up their anxiety or sure. their insecurity feelings or their sadness it allows you to kind of stay. So I do imagine I'm in my peace bubble. You can even give it a color if you want. Yeah, I love that. I'm in my peace bubble and it's intact. And sometimes I have to reapply that peace bubble after an interaction. And sometimes you you might want to go to the restroom for this or ladies room. I just shake it off. So let's say somebody just was so down and I held space and I listened, but I'm like, Ooh, I just want to shake that off. Shake that energy off. Yeah, like physically do something. Physically shake energy. it yeah. off and go back into your peace bubble. Yeah. Um, some of us, it it's, we're feelers. Yeah. So know that and actually embrace it about yourself, but do things to hold your peace. And that goes back to, I stay in power when I basically hold my peace, my centeredness throughout an experience. And that may mean I need a few adjustments. I got to go shake it off in the bathroom and reapply my peace shield, just like I might put a little more lip balm on. It's all right. Listen, back maybe, out. maybe you need uh, an anchor or some physical, like, like maybe that's what some of us decide, you know, I'm going to yep. go in put lipstick on or hand cream or whatever, just to, to kind of imagine you're that. back in your peace bubble. Right. Yes, absolutely. It, I feel, I feel compelled to say, uh, and, and curious to see what your thoughts on, if you agree with me, that the flip side of this conversation is similar to when we talked about as we grow and evolve and start to, uh, you know, show more of our own boundaries, some people might react with surprise or not sure how to take that. I feel that we have to talk about the flip side of all this too, is um, some people around you, like when you, when you really do the work to create your boundaries and create that space for yourself. And like you said, this peace bubble, not everyone around you has done the same amount of work, is not on the same path or at the same place in the journey and may not be as equipped to do the same. And I have found that sometimes, you know, people who have done the work, it's sort of like, um, I don't know if this is politically correct to say anymore, but a reformed smoker, right? Who yeah. now suddenly is on this mission to help everyone around them quit smoking, right? And while yeah. that may sound great, and while that may sound like a really valiant effort, it, it might not be your job or your responsibility right. to change the other person. Exactly That's the point right. I'm trying to make is that we mm -hmm. also have to hold space for others who might process differently or react differently and not come across as, oh, this is me being so evolved. Let me show you the way now. Exactly. And and we've we've all had this example of my nieces are vegan and now you, you know, if you eat meat in front of them, you're a bad person, right? Or whatever it is, you know, we have to own our choice, but also own that others are on their journey. Right. And I might plant, I might drop a breadcrumb. I think that's okay. Like, hey, if you're if you're really feeling a lot of anxiety, you might want to try something like this. I can drop a breadcrumb, but then I'm done. Yeah. It is not about now um, recruiting, <laughs> which, you know, some people can feel pressured when that starts to happen. 
And then I would just use I statements like I feel better eating this way. I'm enjoying the calm that I get. When the minute we say you, Anna, you, Anna, really right. need, ooh, or you should, or you should, or you need yeah. to, or whatever. Yeah. So I would just, if, if, if something's really working for you, totally, you can brag about it. Just keep it like I am noticing for me, the most powerful thing you can say is I have more energy. I feel more in control. I'm enjoying um, not having as much stress. I'm finding more time for myself. And don't go to the you like you should or you need right. or um, because it's really people will either probably reject it outright. I know I did when people tried to tell me about stuff. I want well, to do that. So right. we're ready. We can't change, right? We don't, we're not going to change. Exactly. Ready. And, 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 and that's why the breadcrumb works because yeah, I I'm get to pick ready, it up. But then I might a month from now go, I remember Stephanie talking about that at that. I'm, I'm going to send her a quick message and just see if I can learn more about that. That's fine. Yeah. Have a breadcrumb. But some people have like a baguette. And they're like banging it against your head, right? Nobody wants that. <laughs> Nobody wants that. And don't do that at the holiday dinner either. Exactly. Right yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Stephanie, this has been a great conversation and I trust it's helped a lot of people. Um, and certainly you uh, bring a lot of value to the clients you work with any time of the year, not just during this time. So um, before we say goodbye today, just tell us a little bit more about you know, your, your coaching practice, who you work with, how somebody can connect with you if they'd like. Oh, I would love to. Thank you. Um, sure. I work with individuals that are now ready to be aware or already are aware that there are some things not working for them in their life any longer. It could be a pattern. It could be a cycle. It could be a frame of mind. It, they're just dissatisfied and they're looking for ways to be more engaged in their life, not escaping, get more joy or happiness in their life. And I blend coaching and energy together. So I actually can help individuals. I, I can sense when energy is blocked in their physical body and clear that and revitalize it so that the energy is flowing for them. We can work on mindset. And I also do a little bit of somatics work with the physical body, because we do sometimes contract and hold old patterns in us. So there's kind of three main ways that I work with folks. Some people come for coaching and come for a point in time, like one month, I got to just get my head back in gear. So we're going to coach for a month. I have a program that's a little more involved, release attachments, basically, to free your future. As kind of an eight week section. And then I have a monthly membership, which is an, eight, an energy healing and a coaching session every month in a group format. So awesome. there's a couple of different ways, but I'm pretty neutral on what the change is. It's really what you want differently in your life. And then we work a plan according to that. That's great. I love that you give those options that are, are very specific to who your audience is. That's really great. So if someone wants to get in touch with you, what is your website? The best way is my website is www.positivechangeacceleration.com. Perfect. And all that information is on the website. You can also book a free 15 minute phone call so we could get to know each other, see what your issue is. And I am not always the best person for someone, but I have a large network and I'm always happy to refer if there's someone else in my network that might be a better fit. That is great. All right. Well, so we'll have that um, in the show notes too. Thank so you. people can link right to your website. Well, Stephanie, thank you so much for being on Monday Morning Mojo. Um, I think that uh, this was a really good conversation for us to have right now. And I know Stephanie and I both wish you lots of peace this Absolutely. holiday season. And um, hopefully we'll take um, some of these, these reminders with you wherever you go over the next few weeks, right? Sounds good. Yes, I will use them myself. Believe me. Same. All right, Stephanie, thanks again. And everyone, thank you for joining me. It's always a pleasure to be here with you every week. I will see you soon.